Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, I'm still here at Drift Dam, still practically being blown off the dam by the high winds. Um, this is why I have short hair, so it doesn't get flapped around when I'm out here filming. Whose idea was it to film these outside, eh? I don't know. I could be behind a nice, warm, comfortable desk, but it wouldn't be quite so interesting, would it? Um, right, it's a bit of a one-off this, not a series-based one, which is unusual. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about the bucket. Now, this is a sort of presentation that I do uh, with new clients to explain what a financial planner does. Okay. Um, it's just part of what a financial planner does, but it's pretty useful. So hopefully you'll find it helpful. As ever, before we get into it, uh, I must thank my very good friends at Seven Investment Management in London, who sponsor Meaningful Money. I'm very, very grateful to them for doing so. Right, the bucket goes like this, effectively. Um, I am going to, actually I don't quite know how I'm going to do the graphics bit of this, but I think what I'll probably do is do a little picture in picture type thing and nip up to the top corner. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, and hopefully it'll work. So, imagine, picture if you will, a bucket, okay? Now, oh, it's my uh, phone texting. So, um, <clears throat> your bucket is your liquid cash. This is money you can spend and eat. It's money which is available, accessible. You can go take it out of a cash machine or make a phone call or fill in a form and have that money available to you within a week and this is your bucket and a bucket has a water level so the water is your liquid money your available money it'll be your ISAs your bank or building society uh, balances maybe some shares that you can sell quickly and have the money for that's what's in your bucket this is money you can eat spend get at very quickly now that bucket is topped up while you're working it's topped up by your salary every month uh, it might be topped up by dividends if you do hold some shares if you're a pensioner it'll be topped up by your pension your state pension company pension private pension whatever um, maybe you're claiming some benefits like work you know working tax credit or um, child benefit or whatever that's all liquid money going into the bucket every month or whatever maybe there's an inheritance sort of a one-off uh, lump sum of money um, that drops into the bucket too and so your bucket is topped up okay now what is not in your bucket three important things are not in your bucket one of them is your house your house is not in your bucket because you can't eat your house you can't readily get money out of it particularly not since mortgages are uh, more difficult to come by these days um, but in any case you don't mortgage your house just to buy food do you um, your house is not in your bucket However, maybe one day you will sell your house and downsize. Perhaps, you know, in retirement, you don't need such a big house. Now the kids have flown the nest. Um, so you'll downsize and that will release some money that will go into the bucket. Your pension fund, assuming you're pre-retirement, your pension fund uh, is not in your bucket because you can't get at it. Now, when you take benefits from your pension, one quarter of it, as, it, uh, as I speak at the moment, is available for you to take as a tax-free cash lump sum. So that can drop in the bucket, no problem. But the pension fund, you can't ever get at. It's there to provide you with an income. So the pension income will drop into your bucket, but not the fund, that is outside. Thirdly, if you have a business, that's not in your bucket easy either, because you can't easily uh, you know, take money out of it very easily. Yeah, you know, it'll be paying you a salary, hopefully, and maybe some dividends. Um, but if you've got a factory or something, then you can't very easily eat that. One day you may sell your business and, you know, um, release money from that. That money will drop into your bucket. So there are things, three things particularly, your house, your pension, and your business, which are not in the bucket per se, but sometimes money can come from them and top up the bucket. Bucket's looking pretty healthy now, there's plenty of things going into it, but as ever, uh, it's not a one-way street, and there are taps on the bottom of this bucket. 
First tap is your current expenditure. Let's say you are still working, you know, you still have a business or whatever, you're not retired yet, and your bills are, you know, the usual bills, council tax, putting petrol in the car, things like that. Well, that's a tap on the bottom of this bucket, draining water off, draining money off every month to pay for your bills. Let's say then you do retire and your sort of expenditure changes. You've got more time on your hands now and hopefully you've sort of made provision and you're having sort of two or three holidays a year instead of just one. Um, so you've turned off your sort of normal expenditure tap and now you've got an even bigger tap with even more money coming out every month because you're spending more money, which is great. That's what it's for. So sort of early retirement in your 60s and maybe early 70s, you're spending a lot of money and your, your bucket is draining off. Then maybe in later life, um, you know, your sort of health perhaps deteriorates a little bit, like we were talking about last time. Maybe you're spending a little bit less. Well, that's a different tap again. You sort of closed off the early retired years tap, which was very sort of gushing. Um, and now, you know, you're a little bit more frail. You're not going out so much. You've got everything you need. You're spending less money. So this is a different tap with less sort of drips coming out of it, if you like, or smaller ones, less draining off your bucket. And then finally, there's a tap which you turn on and off just sort of quickly now and again for one-off expenditures. Maybe you change the car or make a gift to your children or whatever, okay? So the bucket analogy is, you know, you've got a bucket with water in it, there's stuff going in it, there's stuff coming out of it. Now, one of two things can happen to uh, your uh, bucket water level. Actually, I should just say that there's probably another tap on there which could be a very hefty tap and that's long-term care. So uh, perhaps best not to forget that. So one of two things can happen to the level of water in your bucket, the level of liquid cash. It can either run out, which is obviously a pretty grim scenario. You don't want to run out of money at any point. But arguably even worse, the level of water in your bucket can overflow. You can have too much water in your bucket. Too much money? Is that possible? Well, of course it is. Because if you die with too much money in your bucket, then first of all, you're probably going to get taxed to hell and back. But far more importantly, it means that you haven't lived to the extent that you could have done. You haven't spent the money that you could have done while you still had your health and the ability to enjoy it. So the purpose of this is to explain that a good, competent financial planner will help you manage the water level. He will tell you when to spend more money. I spend at least half my time telling clients to spend money and just enjoy it for crying out loud. Remember, one of the central tenets of uh, this website is that money is not an end in itself. It's there to serve your life goals and wishes and desires. So it's there to be enjoyed. So for goodness sake, spend, spend it. Right? A good financial planner will make sure you don't spend too much, but worst of all, you know, you don't want it to just keep growing. You want to use it, even if it's not spending it, but giving it away to your children so they can enjoy it and get use out of it. So a good financial planner will help you monitor the level of your bucket, and that's a serious value that they can add. That's it. I hope that's helpful. Please, you know, ask any questions. Um, but that's just something that I go through with new clients to sort of illustrate the value and really what financial planning is intended to do. It's managing your bucket. You know, financial planners, particularly in our industry, we get hit up and um, sort of fixating on the complex tax sort of strategies we can put together. Clients usually don't give a monkeys about that. All they want to know is, have I got enough money to, to do whatever I want to do in life? Um, and live life to the full. A good planner will help you to do that. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, that's it. Uh, moving on now. No idea what I'm going to talk about next. I've got lots of options. I, you know, I've got plenty of things I could talk to you about, uh, but I'm just not sure exactly where I'm going yet. So uh, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Leave any comments underneath here, and uh, I'll see you next time.